So you want to do high quality audio processing with the Raspberry Pi. Maybe you want to make a guitar pedal or a synth module. So do I. I've been experimenting with Arduino and Teensy for several years now, but I finally switched to Raspberry Pi for four reasons. Number one, the Raspberry Pi is a real computer running a real OS and has a lot of processing power. We get to devote all the resources of an entire computer to whatever crazy effects and synthesis stuff that we want. That is amazing. Number two, the Python programming language. It's elegant and powerful. It's easy to get started, but it's extremely deep. It allows us to take complete control of this little tiny computer here and include features that you'd normally only see in a desktop application in our hardware devices. Number three, Pure Data. Pure Data is an insanely powerful graphical programming language. You don't have to write any code to do audio, MIDI, serial communications, GPIO, lighting, graphics, video, you name it, it can do it. A lot of people use Pure Data to prototype and explore before they start writing code for when they write plugins or make hardware devices. But we don't actually have to write any of that code. We get to devote all of the resources of this little computer to running pure data. And so this means we can make changes in real time and get immediate results. Number four, this thing, the audio injector. Before I found this thing, I had all the other components, but I was dead in the water. Do a quick Google search for how to get audio in and out of the Raspberry Pi and you find that it's just a huge mess. There are these pages that talk about which audio interfaces, USB ones that may work with the Raspberry Pi, but there are all these workarounds and things that's a serious mess. And try to find something that's small and cheap enough to incorporate into a, a hardware device like a pedal or a synth module. When I found this, it solved all the problems. It's easy to use, it's cheap, uh, it sounds awesome. This thing does stereo 24-bit 96K, and uh, there's actually a an eight input and six output one as well. Uh, like you can make a mixer or like a serious, you can make all kinds of awesome stuff with this. This is revolutionary. All of the pieces that we need to create amazing new instruments, effects processors, and controllers exist, and they're actually really cheap. We can make things that have never existed before because nobody could ever afford to devote all the resources of an entire computer to one little tiny thing like a guitar pedal or a synth module. All we need to do is figure out how to fit all of the pieces together. There are gonna be a lot of new skills to master and I have not mastered all of them, but the sooner we get started, the sooner we're actually gonna get there. What we're gonna cover in this video is uh, basically how to get started. We're gonna start with all the raw components. At the end, we're gonna have a Raspberry Pi actually processing audio in Pure Data through the audio injector card. You don't need any experience with the Raspberry Pi to do this. If you run into any trouble, the internet is full of information about the Raspberry Pi. It's one of the most written about pieces of equipment ever, basically. Uh, but also you can ask questions in the comments and, uh, and I'll try to help. Okay, to get started, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. Here's a Pi 3 Model B Plus. Here's a Zero W. I like them both, but this is way slower. Uh, you need an audio injector. So this is the standard stereo one. This is the stereo one in the shape of a Raspberry Pi Zero. I mean, check out how small this stuff is when it's plugged in together. This is awesome. This is cheap. This is super cheap. Uh, and the performance is great. You need a micro SD card. And you'll probably need one of these things. You're gonna need a USB keyboard. You're gonna need a USB mouse. And you're gonna need some kind of LCD monitor or whatever that has an HDMI port on it. Oh yeah, you also need a power supply. I have one here. Right here. All right, so first thing, we're gonna go to raspberrypi.org because we need to download the operating system for the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna download Raspbian and we wanna choose Raspbian Buster with desktop. All right, that's 1149 megs, it's gonna take a while. So in the meantime, let's download Etcher, which we'll use to flash the operating system uh, onto the SD card. All right, I've got a Mac, so I'm gonna download it for Mac OS.
Okay, so it's finished downloading. Now let's go grab that disk image and mount it. Okay, we'll drag uh, the app onto the applications folder. Let's go make sure it's there. Yeah, excellent, there it is. Okay, we can close this window. And that, and that. Okay, this download's gonna take a while because we live in the woods and we have a slow internet connection. Okay, great, it's done. So let's go find it. We'll unzip it. There it is. Let's go over to uh, Etcher and open it. We're gonna select that same image right there. Okay, put the SD card in there. It detected it. Okay, click flash. Okay, ask for your computer password, type that in. There we go, and it's done. Okay, put the SD card in. Now power it up. All right, next. Okay, I'm in the United States. American English, yes. Yes. New York, English language, US keyboard, yes. This looks good. Okay, we're gonna skip this because we'll do it later. Okay, restart. Okay, so now we need to enable SSH and VNC. So go to here, interfaces, SSH, VNC, good. All right, so we're gonna see here in the top right corner, VNC logo has just appeared. Right click, go to options, and I'm gonna switch authentication to VNC password. Now I'm gonna set the VNC password by clicking on this users and permissions thing here. Password, okay. All right, now on my Mac, uh, we should test and make sure that it works. Okay, I'm gonna use screen sharing, which is a built-in app on Mac OS X, and I need to know what my IP address is. So if you go over, hover over the, um, the little uh, Wi-Fi thing, you can see that the IP address of the Raspberry Pi is 192.168.0.22. So that's what I'm gonna type in to this. Okay, now put in my VNC password. Cool, and it works. And I move the mouse here, it moves over there. Awesome. Okay, now we need to do a full update. So we're gonna use the terminal and type super user do at get update. This could take a while. Okay, that's done. So, super user do at get upgrade. This also will probably take a while. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and install Samba. So, super user do at get install Samba. Samba. Oops. Colin, bin. Okay, so why are we installing Samba? We need a quick and easy way to get files on and off of the Raspberry Pi from another computer. 
using USB thumb drive is really annoying and clunky. Uh, I've had it happen that when I plug it in, it actually makes the thing crash. I don't want that to happen. All right, so this is super easy. We're just gonna share our home directory on the Pi on the network via Samba. And then uh, from other computers, we could just drag files on there and, um, and they'll appear on the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna say no. I'm not really sure what way it should be, but I use no and it works. Okay, now we need to edit the uh, Samba configuration file. Okay, so we are gonna scroll down to a spot that says share definitions. And then you see right here, it says read only under the home directory section. We're gonna switch that to no because we want to be able to write to that directory. So next, control X to exit. Uh, y for yes, we want to write, uh, write over the uh, old file. Hit enter. Good. Okay, now we need to set the uh, the Samba user's password. So, super user do smb password dash a pi. That's the user whose password we're setting. Okay, good. One last thing, we need to restart this service. Smbd restart. Cool. So let's test out Saba and make sure that it works. I'm gonna open up the file manager here on the Raspberry Pi and we can see our home directory, the home directory for the user Pi. And over here on my Mac, I'm gonna open up a new finder window, scroll down to the shared section and check this out. There's a thing called Raspberry Pi now. Okay, I'm gonna hit connect as and put in my username and password. So this is pi, and then that Samba password that I set earlier. Okay, I'm gonna remember this password. And cool, all right, this folder just showed up. And check it out, this is the same as the home folder over here. So um, let's test it out by just dragging a file on the Mac onto that folder, and let's see whether it appears on the Raspberry Pi. So it totally did. Check it out. Here we go. Open this up. Yes, it worked. That's cool, isn't it? So the next thing we need to do is download and install the audio injector drivers. So there are a few steps. First, we're going to download the Debian package that contains the drivers. Okay, make sure you type it in right. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the little file manager here and we're in our home directory. We can see that it got downloaded to the home directory here. So double click with the mouse, install. It's gonna ask for the password. Okay, so that part is done. Now we're going to run the script that actually installs all of the, the drivers and stuff. So, back in the terminal. Here we go. Okay, we are going to reboot. So, look over here. Right click. No audio device is find, found. That's because we haven't connected the audio injector yet. Let's now install pure data. Super user do at get install pd. We still need to actually plug in the audio injector. Let's shut down. Okay, gonna plug in the audio injector. Okay. And I'm gonna connect up my guitar amp effects send and return to the input and output. Okay, it's time to boot up again. All right, so check this out. When I right click here, I can see it says audio injector Pi sound card. It actually exists. There's a green check mark, looks good. 
So here are some things we need to do. It says no controls visible. Hit select controls and turn all of them on. Okay, now I'm gonna turn master all the way up. Go to capture, leave it like it is. Switches, okay, I want line in and I'll leave ADC high pass filter on. Output mixer hi-fi. What this one here does is it actually turns on the audio output. It's a weird label for it, but that's what it is. Over here in options, we'll leave it at line in. Okay, now it's time for us to test this. So we go up to that menu there, we go to sound and video, pure data, it has appeared, that's a good sign. Okay, yes. All right, go to preferences, audio. See, it says audio injector pie sound card hardware. There's also a plug-in, I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, let's put this all the way up to 96K. Okay, now let's make a simple little patch to see whether it's working. We're gonna put ADC tilde. That means uh, that's the audio input. Okay, let's put another object. It's gonna be DAC tilde. Okay, we'll just click out of that. Now, I'm gonna turn on DSP so audio passes through. I've got it plugged in and you can hear no sound, right? Okay, if I connect this to here, and when I disconnect it again, gone. So audio is actually passing through our Raspberry Pi. Mission accomplished. All right, this was a long video, but there was a lot to cover. I hope you found these instructions helpful and that you enjoyed this video. If you followed along with your own Raspberry Pi and audio injector, then you now have something amazing. A tiny, inexpensive, very powerful computer with a high quality audio interface running Linux and pure data that you can program in any language you want, including Python. We used to dream about having this kind of power just a couple of years ago. However, this is just the beginning. There's gonna be a lot more to learn and to talk about in future videos. I hope you join me on this journey.